We're excited to be back with you. Uh, we're dealing with trauma and specifically we're dealing with how trauma relates to black men and our experience and how it affects us. So today, tonight we have, start here. Okay, Zadarian Hines again. Rick Frederick. Amari Jones. Chris Cooper. Keith Liggins. And I'm the pastor, Pastor Kelly Taylor. So we're gonna jump right into it. And uh, I, wanna, I wanna talk about some categories of trauma. Uh, the more I've been reflecting on trauma, uh, I've been thinking about how that, that, that there's so many categories uh, under which we experience trauma. And uh, tell me whether or not you guys agree. Uh, one area is relational trauma that may deal with family, uh, interpersonal relationships, uh, school, or wherever you find relationships. Uh, then racial trauma, um, just in the skin we're in, right. and uh, that spurs on uh, economic trauma. Mm -hmm. Then there's uh, sexual and social trauma. So when we think about trauma or whatever, I want us to be able to think in these areas, right, these different aspects. Of course, social trauma if you grew up where I grew up, you have gangs, drugs. Um, if you have gone to prison, right, and you get out and you want to get your life together, you want to be responsible in society, you're going to face the trauma, social trauma of trying to find employment. And you're going to find trauma when it comes to housing. That you'll find there's discrimination. And I believe that's connected to uh, systemic uh, racism, uh, racial trauma, or whatever. Then, like again, we have sexual and whatever else. Right. So let's let's uh, let's jump in here. How do how do black men address sexual trauma? Not very well. <laughs> well, what you talking about? What's sexual trauma? <laughs> I mean, a lot of black men suffered sexual trauma as kids. Mm. But we don't talk about that. Why not? Because again, it, it, it goes against our full grown manhood. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, even though we had no control or no power as a child, and some people were abused as children, mm -hmm. you can't admit that. You can't talk about it. Okay. Yeah, because our folks are so tough that they ain't even they ain't even give you a pass of being weak, even if you was a child, they are still make you feel like you was weak at some point. Right. And you couldn't even speak about it as a man. Watch right. this. So that's deep to me what he said. I hope we caught that. So when it relates to black men, do we suffer a lot of trauma associated with shame? Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Because if, I, if I'm five and I gotta be ashamed that an adult male or an older male uh, molested me or whatever, or right? Female. Or female. Or older female. Yeah. The, the wait, wait, do we take the older female I think we got some. different? No, uh, that's trauma. That's, that's trauma? That's still trauma. Yeah, that's trauma, but we still accept it. Yeah, we accept that. That's more acceptable. Matter of fact, that's a fantasy for some Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, exactly. Look at them as a but instead of, and it's instead of five year old, though, right. right? Instead of five year old, and it's a, you know. What if you're 15? It's a go. It's a go. <laughs> I still think it could be a trauma, even if that's. It's a trauma? It's a 15 it could, he said it could be. It could be. It how, how so? It depends on how old is the woman. 30. That, that could be a trauma. That's what I'm telling you. If I'm a parent and I find out some 30 year old woman right. having a relationship with my son, we got a problem. Because you're looking at it from your ass. <laughs> you're looking at it from the time. But you're not looking at it. No, I'm not looking at it. I should have had him on the back. Okay. I'm not going to make him ashamed of it. 
I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna you. shame you, though. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, shame you. Yeah. She and I are gonna have a problem. Wait a minute. Do fathers. I'm just yes. asking you now. Do, do we address <laughs> everything? Most of the time. Yeah. We do? Yeah, most of the time. We do? Address everything you say? Meaning, okay, let's say you come to your son's room. There's a condom in the, in the you find it. You address it? What do you do? Probably should, but probably, nine times out of ten you won't. Probably won't. You That's won't. what I said. Oh, okay. We I address everything. Because yeah, my wife will. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't happened, but, but for me, but I don't know if I'm if I'm being honest. You probably say you will. You address everything. I will address. It. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I see it as a, all of the everything under that roof is my responsibility. Okay. So I need. Mean, I got to dress. I got to. You know, if I see it, I got to see what's going on. Okay. I can't, you know, you can't be a child in my house and my child. Yeah. Now, well, if it's anybody's child, if it's Rich's child, who's yeah. over my house, I gotta, they're my responsibility. Okay. I gotta find out, hey, what's going on? What you know about this? What is, you know, I need to, I need to find out. So I can't just, oh, and just wash my hands. Is there, is there an indictment that I didn't address it before I had to address it? Uh, it, it could be. Okay. It could be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what you got, Chris? No, I would address it. You know, okay. Because my dad never addressed that. Mm. You know what I mean? Why didn't you? Why just, uh, you, you may not know unless you ask, but just from knowing him, why do you think he did it? Because my dad was one of those Rolling Stones. Yeah, one typical of those man. Typical man. Man's man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, oh well. Mm. Now, what we call a Rolling Stone, could some of that be associated with trauma? Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. How so? Because it's opening up doors. You know, you open up doors to kids at, at a young age, and we and you pick up traits that you didn't even know you had in you. Right. You, know, you said something deep. I, I don't think it's till the next session. I'll I'll be able to mm -hmm. if I can remember tell you how deep what you just said is. But or it can be uh, trauma related to uh, you being so uh, promiscuous as a, as a child that you may have learned from your father, from your uncles, what have you. Um, and you think that that is the way you're supposed to lead your life now. Mm. So now you you growing up, and you may even be uh, what they deem a whoremonger. So you got you got kids over here, and kids over there, and kids over here. You got six women. Are we traumatizing those kids by various baby mamas? I believe so. I believe, yeah, possibly. I it's, it's a possibility. I think it's not the kids know that they say, this is okay. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We have, we have, mm -hmm. I got five women here. Hey, son, this is okay for when you have five. Does the trauma then take place on the, and since we're black men, that's the community I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, but does the trauma take place in our community by this behavior? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, this has been a thing Absolutely. before I can remember. It's always been a thing, mm -hmm. having multiple baby mamas. And I remember being in high school saying, I didn't want that. Like, I don't want to be <laughs> having mm -hmm. 10 baby mamas. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, even had, I even found out I had a sister that, like, at the age, I think I was about, what, eight years old? Really? Yeah. And I only knew my, my sister and my brother. And here come another girl coming mm -hmm. in. Hey, I'm your sister. What you mean, you my sister? <laughs> right. like, what as, are you talking about? As a kid, is that traumatic? It kind of threw me off for a minute because I'm like, where, where have you been? Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Like, like why now? And who's mama? Who's yeah, who's mama? Who's mama? Who's mama? Who's mama? This mama, mama. mama. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who's that's, mama? That, that's throwing off a family. That's throwing off a family dynamic, as you know. Right. Yes, that's your right. family. That's your security. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what you know. Even if it's not pleasant, that's where you know you belong. Right? You right. find out it's not as solid as you thought. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. Do we do we do we think of trauma as traumatic? You understand what I'm saying? Like, the, the are you able to register, Chris? That was a tra traumatic experience at eight years old. Finding out there's a sister, mm -hmm. right? That's of a certain age. She's my family. I don't know her. She doesn't even feel like him. Right. This is my blood. So. Do you register, hey, this is somewhat traumatic, or do you just kind of 
go on like. I think I just kind of, I just, well, actually, we just went on with life. Is that our way? I guess that's most people's fine. way, yeah. 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 Um, anybody know somebody who got killed when you were young? Yeah. How yeah, did how did that register? That still that still affects every now. I'd probably say once a week out of every week of my life. At least mm -hmm. once a week. How long ago was it? It was about fourteen years ago. Wow. And for fourteen years you're still dealing with therapy? You had been therapy? I've been in therapy for three years. Did it help? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. A little bit. Okay. I applaud that, man. A lot of black people, man, we're so embarrassed about it. Yeah, because they say they mix therapy with being crazy. Like, but I knew it was something wrong. Like, yeah. I lost plenty of people, but that one kind of stuck me. Mm -hmm. Kamari, man, what would you say is one, maybe the, one of the most traumatic experiences you've ever dealt with? No? Your life. Do you think you deal with uh, traumatic situations or no? No. You don't? Nah. Okay. Lucky man. <laughs> Lucky man. So you never you never knew anybody that went to jail? So somebody can go to jail, think about this now. And for us, we don't register that as trauma. Is that, am I wrong? Is that trauma or not? It is trauma, but that's, that's the thing. I was gonna say, uh, for Kamari, he's like, yeah, I'm not somebody with Jim, he's like, what traumatic to me? Right. That's what he's thinking, but it, it is trauma. Um, I, well, I didn't know or think it was trauma until I was basically grown. But I have a, a, a uncle that's in prison um, and I don't remember that dude ever being out on the street. Like I don't, I don't remember him being out on the street like ever. So he probably went to prison, and I'm kind of assuming I, I really hadn't asked my mom really how old I was, but it had to be I was I had to be five, six years old in there somewhere, and I I've, I've never seen him out on the street. Okay, so let me ask you this. Do you feel like that's really no personal direct impact to me or, or, um, or you know, how do you feel about that? Um, I still think it's, it's, I still think it's traumatic because um, this is, so he's an uncle that um, consequently is on my mother's side, so this is my uh, mother's brother. Right, right up under her. First, her first brother, but her uh, and my dad's family, so my dad's side of the family and my mom's side of the family, grew up in the same neighborhood. So my dad knows him too. Like my father, my uh, paternal side of the family knows him. So we would talk, you know, about him, but I never see him do out on the street. The few times I do remember just seeing him is when we <coughs> went to visit him at the, you know, in prison at the jail. Okay. So that was like, wow. And then I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I ain't really trying to go up there. Mm -hmm. yeah, Man, that was the trauma. I'm like, I don't, I don't want I, to I I go here and see, see if we can do this. I'll I see if I can do this right. Um, you mentioned an uncle that's constantly going to jail. Right? He's been in there, yeah. Been in jail. Um, why, why, why are our people going to jail? So, do you ever ask, on the superficial, we can say they did this, robbery, drugs, murder, theft, whatever, right? Burglary, whatever, right? Rape, whatever, okay? But do we ask, why the habituation? Like, why, why, like, let's say this, how old are you? 19. At 19, yeah, I mean, right? <laughs> At 19, he's like, yeah, I know somebody went to jail, but that's not, I don't register that as trauma, right? But do we ever ask, why are we going to jail? No, we don't know that. Why, why, why do we have drug addicts? Alcoholics? This is what they seen growing up. 
what they say, okay? It's a result of trauma, a lot of it. It's a result of trauma, let's go there, right? It's a, it's a result of trauma, right? It's an escape. Yeah. Escape from <clears throat> what? Life. Ain't got no money, ain't got no girlfriend, man, living in a roach infested house, no prospects. Mm -hmm. Or the, or the, uh, the social justice, or the racism, right? Yeah. You might be drinking or doing drugs to to forget, or because you just you you know you've been going through so much with with the police. So you, to, you know, it can, you know. So check it out. I was in a uh, college history class, and the, and we're we're going to read about uh, our primary book was uh, Howard's Then, the People's History of the United States. Powerful book. What's Very, book? A People's History of the United States. How was in, right? And the, he's giving history, man, that uh, like pull the scales off your eyes, okay? Got an Italian, short Italian teacher, and we're, we're talking about uh, Christopher Columbus coming over into the, uh, what would be known as the Newfoundland. Of mm -hmm. And he says, before we engage in the reading, let me give some perspective on these people. Let me give you some background, context. And so he tells a story, right, about a young man. He stole what would have been the, the equivalent of 15 cents or something. It's in a book. He stole this. The community found out and beat him as a community. They beat him, right? Mm -hmm. Chained him, his father did, found out, his father beat him, then chained him to a bed. And each day for three days, set food right outside of his reach mm -hmm. so that the dog could eat it in his face as discipline. Wow. Okay? Cruelty. <laughs> Are you listening? Some nice people. The person who is telling this story, advocating this form of discipline, is the boy it happened to. He's trying to contextualize Europe and what the people experienced. So that when we read about cutting off of hands, raping of women, and the things that they did, he wants us to read it and not critically judge the people who did this. So I usually, when I'm in a college, when I'm in a course, I don't talk a lot. I, 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 you know, but I raise my hand. I wanted to engage, and I said, "Okay, let's let's say I can understand this and rationalize and contextualize." And feel right. I'm just curious. Why doesn't this happen to some inner city black young man? That if he's sitting in a court, nobody seeks to contextualize his traumatic experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that people might understand what is moving him to, right? Because you're looking at the moves they're making, but usually an alcoholic is escaping something, even though he's not escaping. Mm -hmm. He's 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 he, he, and he's adding the problem, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I want to go here then. Triggers. How might you guys understand triggers? Like a trauma happens. Right? 14 years back. How do we understand triggers as related to trauma? Okay, I, this is like a really minor story. Okay. I was real smart in school and real good in school until the second grade. In the second grade, I had a really mean teacher. This is my busy. Okay. I mean, I'm just really eager. I, I'm reading and I'm doing everything. So I get to the second grade. And she's like, stick her fingernails in my arm, you know, just grab on my ear to bleed. I mean, all of this kind of stuff. I'm a little seven, six, seven year old. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid to say something. You know, this is a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get in trouble. I think mm -hmm. if I say something, mm -hmm. I'm going to get in trouble at home. So mm -hmm. I won't say anything. So I start messing up. I don't do my work. I don't turn in my homework. And this. That little trauma went on the 12th grade. Wow. It went on. I was smart. I, I had to get a GED. Wow. 
Wow. I went to I went to a high school, probably probably ten high school, where they had a model schools program. They say, this is what you got to do to graduate, just go through that stuff for grade. I wasn't disciplined enough for that. So by the time I got to the 12th grade, 9, 10, 11, 12, I had seven years of music. Two years of religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I would get A's, but I didn't take everything I was supposed to take. Now, why did my parents know that? You know, you paid right. all this money for this private school. My sister got a 4.0. Mm -hmm. And it stemmed from that trauma. What's, what's, what's your highest degree now? What? I, got a, I have a JD, a law degree. Okay. From from a GED to yep. a JD, mm -hmm. I think that's powerful. I think that's powerful mm -hmm. because I think there's a story rich in there mm -hmm. uh, of overcoming trauma, right? right? Um, what about you, man? Does anything make you mad? Is it is there a way to get you, make you mad or act in a way maybe out of control or no? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what? Okay. What? Bad attitude makes me. So if somebody has a bad attitude towards me, towards you, yes. Um, what, what, what? Give me an example of like what you would see as a bad attitude. If somebody's just talking to me how they don't want to be talked to, or so speaking to you in a disrespectful way. Yeah. Okay. Or what? Or just like if you just not treat me how you want to be treated, it's, it's going to be, I'm not going to say it's going to be suspected, but I'll feel the way and I'll react to that. For young black people, but, you, can't, you can't be disrespectful. No, mm -hmm. listen to what he said. Uh, so I, 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 I told my sons, right, whose experiences are way different than mine, yeah. way different than mine, right? Mm -hmm. But I told them, you know, all in all, if you want to understand what we call the hood, it operates on respect. Yeah. Would y'all agree or disagree? Yeah, so, so like with what he's saying, for the hood, respect, and, and, and here's what I, I said, you tell guys tell me if I'm right or wrong, you disagree or whatever, is, and you don't have to be cowardice to respect. Right, no, or, yeah. if it, or if it's in the hood, a lot of times, is it respect? Or do I want you to fear me? Yeah, that's that's a thing. Uh, go go there. Tell tell me what's so. Saying. Okay, so this is like my dad. Okay. Okay. Like, like I'm just gonna talk about him. Okay. Okay. My dad. People didn't respect him. They feared him mm -hmm. because, because of the fact of the the consequences, the repercussions of, of what he would he, of what he would do. That 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 re. Uh, and our consequences. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, like, you know what I mean? It got, to, it got to the point where I could be at the house sleeping. Okay. I feared him so much that, I mean, I could be at the house, I could hear his truck pull up. I'm trying to go jump in the bed because I don't know who's coming home. Ooh. Right. You, you, you know, you know what I'm saying? That's Yeah. I don't, I don't know who's coming home. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've seen. I don't know that. what version I'm going to get. Yeah. I don't know who's coming home because it's like he drunk, he smoked weed, and that's when he was at his worst. You know what I mean? Or he, when he's not smoking, not drinking, man, I loved him to death. You know what I mean? But it's like, what's going on? You balancing two different people, two different people. I don't know what, what's going to happen to. I don't know. That that almost seems like multiple trauma to me. Yeah, I mean, you know I mean? It's, it's because one, I'm trying to weigh what daddy am I getting? Yeah, right. Let me ask you this: hey, Do you know dad's story deep enough to where where does this come from? Why is dad so severe? From his dad. Ooh. You Why know, is his dad so it's, 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 it's a generational thing, generation to generation. Mm. So, so for me, growing up, you know what I mean, I put a stop. I said, it's going to stop with me. Mm. No raging, no, no, no personality. No, no, no nothing. You know what I mean? Because I don't want my kids going through the stuff I went through. They get one dad. Yeah, they get the one dad. You know mm. what I mean? I mean, yeah, you got, you got to get in their rears. You know, okay. Get in our line. Don't get okay. wrong. Yeah. But I don't beat my kids to the point I have my dad be. Mm -hmm. We used to, we, used to have, we had a ranch out in Rubido. Okay. okay, so we had horses, we had all the items mm -hmm. possible, but we also had whips and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Like I tell people to this day, I, I know what a slave felt like because I could be out there picking okra in the, in our, our our garden or whatever. He'd come out there, crack us on the back with a whip, oh, wow. and just like 
like, man, what you doing? Is, you, is your mind thinking, especially as a young kid, something ain't right about this? Yeah, it wasn't that something wasn't right about it. You know? how, how are you able to tell yourself, or what, at what stage are you telling yourself, whatever triggers my father, this won't be my trigger? It got to the point when, when I wasn't afraid of him. Mm. And, okay. I made, and I made wow. it, and I and I made a decision in my mind. It was a choice, and we all got a choice to make. Yeah, you know what I mean. We can either choose to live with this trauma continuously, or we're gonna choose to deal with it. And mm. it got to me when I started having kids that you know what, I can't do this no more. Mm. You know, so you can say about it, my first child was at twenty two. Okay, so that's when it got to the point where it's like you know what, I'm gonna do things differently. You, the, the first child, boy, or girl, boy. Okay, and so. You, you're thinking already what type of dad he's going to get. Yeah, already. Do, do, do you have any triggers? Um, to be honest with you, and I and I, I recognize them, but when people tell me, oh, you, you just like your daddy. What? Who are you talking to? <laughs> that, that, it triggers me because it's like... <laughs> <laughs> the, the very thing I thought to not follow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Any triggers? Yeah. Too many, actually. <laughs> Too many. Okay. Man. So give me what the, the the give me the one thing consistently that kind of triggers, uh, that takes you back to a place, or whatever. Um, the number one, the number one is um, being called the B word or anything that got consulted with it. They they say it was a B foul or it was anything that could, if you could associate my name with. If that B word is in it, mm -hmm. there's no turning back. You 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 associate that with what? Weakness. Weakness. Um, like I feel like if you feel that low of me, and you think you can beat me, like you think you can take me, and if I have to be the lowest thing on them, I have to show you that I'm not that. Okay. Is there association then with not just the word, but the meaning? Can you relate to a time where you legitimately felt weak, like helpless? You know, I'm talking about, so here's, here's one of the things you guys can tell me if you would disagree. I think one of the things among many, not, I won't say all, black men is not wanting to be vulnerable, right? Was there ever a time, you may not want to go there, but just, you know, yes and no or whatever you're comfortable with, is there a time in my life now, if I think back, where I felt helpless and I said, if I could do something about this, I would, and I'm gonna never go back to any weakness. Talk to me. Um, yeah, my first, my first week in prison. Okay. That was like, I knew all my all my friends was waiting on the other side of the wall for me to come, but. Right then and there, when I checked into a dorm of uh, uh, 300 dudes, and when I first got in there, I asked, I'm like, um, well, where the Crips at? They like, none of them in here. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I'm like, I think Crips in here. You know, it's 300 dudes in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, it ain't not one. They like, nah. Like, like about to get hard. Yeah, it's gonna get hard. And I came in late at night, it was like 11 o'clock, so I know when everybody wakes up, they're gonna be like, who was that? Who was this? Yeah, so before that happened, there was an older dude who was the rep in there. And right before breakfast, I already seen them gathering in their huddles, and everybody was pointing. So before they can get a chance to come ask me, the dude had already told the police, like, nah, man, that dude from LA, he ain't supposed to be in here. I was up there with some dudes from Bakersfield or something. I didn't know how serious that was being out of bounds like that. Like I said, it was my first time in prison. So I didn't know that me being in that dorm wasn't going wasn't to be any good for me. Wow. You know, that was Let me good. ask you this. Uh, are there some triggers that we deem acceptable? I think I think that's a trigger. Well, yeah. I mean, that trigger he said, "Call him a bee, yeah, yeah, right. That's pretty really acceptable. That's acceptable. <laughs> that's I mean, yeah. it's understandable. It's, it's okay, acceptable or or understandable. Uh, uh, 
probably understandable. It's understandable like, because I mean, a lot More of people like, it's just a word. I didn't heard every excuse there was, but this was aftermath of what I already done. Because right. I mean, I, I could be a lot of things, but if I'm that. So I go with the trigger, but the wider me is saying, you know what? It may be understandable, not acceptable. Right. Um, we know this on Sunday, uh, March 27th, just last week, 2022, uh, we're at the Oscars. One, one black comedian tells a joke, right? Uh, Chris Rock, Will Smith responds with a slap, slap him. Lord! Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Acceptable, what? Understandable. Not acceptable. I think that's powerful. Who agrees with my young king right here? I agree with that. <laughs> he said understandable. I guess not acceptable. He said understandable, okay. not acceptable. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I can't say either or. The only, okay, talk to the only reason I say that is because after the joke was said, yeah. he, he was over there just laughing up a storm about it. Right? Mm. As soon as he looked over at his wife and seen that she was right. mad about bothered by it, now he want to walk up on the stage. Trigger. The wife, the, the, wife, the, wife, the wife is the trigger. I want to ask this right here. He, he sent me here, right? Maybe think about it, right? How many of our guys, the woman in their life, be it one of his girls, his girl, his wife, whatever, mama, whoever, acts as a trigger for them? A lot. A lot. A lot. I've been in this situation. Yeah, I definitely. <laughs> I just look at what I have and be like, you know what? I calm down. I just look around my house. I look at my car and I'm like, I ain't gonna even trip. Like, so the Lord, the Lord's blessings. Yeah, it had to be from the response. Yeah, because it was, you know, four years ago. <laughs> what you got, man? Um, so it can be a trigger. Wow. I guess it can be a trigger in that manner, where you want to. I guess get at her, she's a trigger. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking, or it could be a trigger uh, in regards to uh, like protection. Right. So um, about, about uh, how old is my son? So probably 13 years ago, so she was, my wife is pregnant with my son. So we're at uh, a concert at UCLA. Um, on the grass somewhere mm -hmm. and catch her up on, on stage. Uh, but in the front, right in front of the uh, stage, people have blankets out. People are sitting down. Mm -hmm. And there may be some people stand, standing up there further back. So uh, I went to go get some food at the concession stand. My pregnant wife is sitting on the blanket. Mm. Uh, Lupe Fiasco comes to the stage. People, ah! They rush the stage. Oh, right. So I'm at the stand, and I, I kind of glance and I look, and I see like the whole crowd is over there where we just yeah. were. Man, I ran through that crowd. I'm like a dude's over, I'm pushing women yeah. and everything. So, and my wife reminded me of this because of the Will Smith thing. And uh, they, she's kind of sitting in the middle of the lake, and people are essentially like gathered around her. And uh, you know, I said some expletives. I'm, you know, yeah, I'm yeah, pushing people. Yeah. You know, and I'm looking at them like I'm about to kill you, man. Yeah, no, I so, I what I think it's so um, she, you know, she's sitting there. She said she saw me, and she had never seen me like that before. But everybody's about to die. Yeah. Everybody was about to die. Mm. They had stepped on her. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it was a trigger like that to the point where I'm like, man. I have to say, my okay. Wife, my so I, I didn't. I didn't want to go too much into the Will Smith thing. How 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 would you see that analogous to Will's behavior? So, because this one, I would actually, 
I would side with not only understandable, but it on your end regarding that situation acceptable, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Whereas I view the Will Smith thing more like Kamari. Mm -hmm. Maybe understandable, and, and, and I would be with Chris. What I, how I would understand it is one thing, mm -hmm. but not acceptable. Yep. But what, how would you say it's analogous? Um, the only thing that I would say um, in regards to Will Smith in that situation, the only thing that I'm, I'm thinking of um, is him, is it being, uh, is her being a trigger for him in that situation because if she's, she's supposed to have been going through this a couple years, right? And then knowing how <laughs> A woman's hair is like her glory. Okay. Women, women love their hair. What did so, he, wait, so, I want to so, ask a question right quick. Okay. What did he say about her hair? No. Okay. What is Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to think about that. What, yeah. What but did he, say but he said her? he spoke about the movie. Yes. And where she cut her hair off, and everybody didn't get into that guy. Yeah. So so he mentioned GI Jane where she intentionally cut her hair off yeah. for a movie. Yeah. And then he said, see her playing in G.I. Jane 2. Right. And so people put two and two together and said, oh, you're referring to her bald head. Right. But this is different now. She didn't cut it off for a movie. She lost it. And she had to shave the rest of it off. So, it, so back to Will, is, though. I is think he, Will, Chris, think, so. Well, let me, let me finish this part. Though, okay. Right? So I'm thinking Will's trigger possibly could be of her in a depressive state during these last couple of years or whatever because her hair is falling out and him not being able to do anything about it. I'm, a, I'm rich beyond whatever. I can't pay to make you better. I can't do anything to make you better. I gotta see you kind of suffer because you're losing your hair. Mm. So that's what I'm thinking. And then he's laughing at, Chris cut a joke right before that and Will was laughing about that. And then he mentioned that Will's still laughing, and then I think he dawned on him because it's not. It wasn't. It was. It was a joke where you you had to know to get it. If you didn't see GI Jane the first one. You don't know what he's talking about. Now. But if you saw him, like wait a minute. Then I think he caught it. Like wait a minute. This dude kind of does this dude know why her hair is bald now? And then he did what he did, which I didn't agree with him though. But he did what he did. So I think that's how. Okay. So 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 I got you. Um, so here's the thing. Do, do we do this with our, let's say, celebrities or whatever? Do we make allowances for them, right? That, like, you know, look at all what Chris had to know, right? Mm -hmm. He had to know that she didn't because to me, it actually looked like, because I, I didn't know she had alopecia. Mm -hmm. um, and I like I don't know all the full. I, I have a family member with alopecia, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, um, so I didn't know. It looked to me that she had chosen that stop, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. Then her daughter wears that stop. Don't know if it's alopecia too, right. uh, but her children, you know, mm -hmm. they be a little different. Mm -hmm. And that comes from somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So it's all this information you have to have or whatever on Chris. Chris right, part, which he did. Right. right. Um, I'm kind of with Chris. I, I see, I'm seeing this laughter, and it seemed as if it wasn't until the wife responded, which could be interpreted as a beta response, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm asking, could Kamari do that? Could Kamari be upset that somebody told a joke about your mother? And then, again, I grew up, we're from Philly, right? Mm -hmm. So I grew up in the hood, right? If you if you had a cross eye or whatever, they not, they not thinking about your feelings and all of this or whatever. We talked about- well, What you doing? You fighting? No. You not fighting? No. No, we're not no. fighting over every joke. 
Then well, every, you be in fights well, every time. But, but I, I gotta but make, it could be your friend. What and you no, gonna fight? My, no, but if I'm, it's somebody my, you didn't know, you my, my high school, fight. my high school best friend, Greg. Right. Mm -hmm. One, if you in his environment, you gonna catch it. But that's your boy, though. That's what I'm no, saying. No, listen to what I'm saying. N not me. He that's wasn't jumping right. on me. So I'm not talking about me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about if he comes in, if he comes into your world and nobody was closer to him than me and, and me to him. Mm -hmm. he coming to you, if you come in our environment and a lot of people came in our environment, you will catch it. And he's not thinking like, but people loved it. Chris Rock is a comedian. And we're, we're, we, we got an environment where everything, she does, uh, not like this, but it's not like she has stage four cancer, right? right? Mm -hmm. And he's, like he expressed, it's a G.I. Jane joke. It actually wasn't something about her. So even if he was triggered, but, he could apologize later or whatever. But again, could Kamari, could Kamari go and say, you talked about my mom or my girl, you got a girl, man? Yeah. You, you do? Yeah. <laughs> She don't have a lot of patience. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> don't answer that. Um, so, Kamari, he got a girl, right? Um, and uh, somebody tell a joke about it. Could he, could he assault them? And we go, you know, he's going to get somebody advocating for him. Nope. What happens to him? Let's say it's the authorities know my man. Now he ain't Will Smith. He don't have millions, mm -hmm. and he don't have people advocating, right? Because likely, if he got in trouble, the people he knows aren't gonna probably even want to show up to jail. I mean, to uh, court, right? Mm -hmm. He gonna be left out, voiceless, and nobody's gonna have a rash of reasonings to, to defend your girlfriend's feelings, right? right. You hurt her feelings. Whatever he said, I slapped him because he hurt my girl feelings. We gonna rationalize for him or what we gonna do? I I, I do the same thing. Where's he going? I don't. Well, he he be in trouble because well, the, the person whoever the person whoever he assaulted <laughs> probably press charges against him, right? So what might the trouble be? So going to jail. But I would still advocate for. I would explain it if I if it's the same type of deal. And somebody's and his girl has some kind of issue or disease, and but then Kamara he doesn't says, say, oh, wait, 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 I, wait. I would, I would cut, him listen to what you're saying. You're saying you will say his girl's feelings were hurt, and he can slap her, slap somebody. I, I still wouldn't say that it was the right thing to do, but I would understand. What's what would be the application though? Where where are you advocating? I would say I would say what he did and why he did it. We know what he did. He slapped him. Okay. And we know why he did it. Her feelings were hurt. But what could we justify? I could. I could. could. It just, I could. Well, give me the justification. If it, if it, it depends on what his girl, what disease his girl had. If it's a disease that he had, that she had, and he lives with her, you know, and he can't he essentially suffers with her, I would, I would, that's how I would advocate for him. You're, that's, you're, that's me though. I you're a lawyer, you know. would that application work? Because an advocate means you are saying this is justifiable because her feelings were well, hurt, no matter what disease you have, right? Okay. So as an advocate, how would that work? Would it, it, I would it say, depends. it depends, talk to me. What's his record? Is this the first time offense? Okay. First time offense, we, we probably gonna give him probation. Yeah. So can I wait? Who who knows some folks time offenders that didn't get probation? Who knows? That's so I was <laughs> Okay. So so I'm just saying we got our fingers crossed now, right? Yeah. Most yeah. more than likely, he's, he's, he's gonna, gonna get a chance. He's gonna get probation, but he's still gonna have a misdemeanor on his record. Yeah. Okay. What you saying, Chris? So my thing, whole thing is, is that. We, Chris Rock has made jokes about Jada before. That's the other thing. Yeah. And they were all laughing about it. They didn't take it to heart. Okay? But this goes back to... Jokes are a joke. A joke. Jokes on the same thing. On the same show. Like, making jokes. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he said a joke, but look at the benignness of the joke. Look, look at what he said. But he right. said he didn't know. Though. He said he didn't know that she had that. Exactly. You know, what I mean? he, he didn't say he didn't know. So he just made him seem a ball head. Yeah. You know, things like that. So I think what it is is that Will he's a ticking time bomb. Okay, he's holding all this stuff in, all Ooh. this stuff in, and all it's gonna take is one match Ooh. to kaboom. Ooh. You know, Ooh. You know everything. It wasn't okay. You know what I mean? So and it's Jada's fault. It, it, it's her fault yeah. because she's <laughs> making she's making them look stupid. Right. And and I think I, I, I really and think the whole time I would have accepted what Will did had he had he not laughed as soon as Chris Rock said that joke, and he would have just bolted towards the stage. Everybody would have been like, "Oh, he pissed him off." But him laughing and sitting yeah, back, relaxing, how calm he came up there, that's not a man. It did happen. That's not a man walking up to you because you hurt. If you said something about my wife and you offended her, yeah. I'm not walking up there that cool yeah. with my jacket in. Yeah, and then that's you did not going to happen like that. Okay. And then, after so, award, and then even after the award show, it's the, like you still laughing. You go, yeah, you're not going to show. No, you slapped somebody. <laughs> so, I, I want to ask this based on what Chris said. How many ticking time bombs do we have? Everybody here. So, who get? How how can we justify our time bombs? So, because like you said, okay, if he would, if certain things were in place or whatever, we would accept it. But I, what I'm saying is, I, I got you. we we accept his. But I got some cousins. Yeah. I got some. I got some friends. I got some neighbors, right? And to be honest, I care more about them. Then, then I do him. Yeah. And I'm far saying to me, if he's held accountable, it speaks more to them. Right. Right? And I don't I, I love black people. That's why we're doing this. And I don't have anything against ill will about will or whatever. But when we advocate for this, then what about us who are also going to not be able to control ourselves and what happens if you slap a black man in the hood? Going to We're going to close with this. Or no. Cemetery. What yeah, if, if a black man come and slap you? He's going he to gonna, he gonna be hurt. Oh, so, Instantly. so it's going to escalate. Quickly. Okay. So this is the only thing I'm thinking about. Right? When, when, we advocate, <laughs> when we advocate for these things, then you have to say, okay, can my son do this? No. And will... Where would the application be? Right? And will it work? <laughs> right? And can I say, his girlfriend, his wife, his mother's feelings were hurt. Now, a lot of people don't hurt their feelings. Like, you don't slap everybody. Let's close it out. Father, thank you for these gentlemen. And I pray that we are advanced as we think about our traumas, as we reflect on those things that in our lives have impacted us. Thank you for these men being open and vulnerable. Thank you for their wisdom. Uh, thank you that even when we have different perspectives, uh, thank you that we can uh, still have love and understanding. Uh, pray that this advances us as men in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.